Ja. Hallo und ich begrüße euch wieder beim nächsten Interview, wieder mit einem ganz tollen Gast hier, nämlich Armando Perez Cueto. Wir kennen schon länger, I hope you understand yeah. German, yes, a yeah. little bit, yeah. I think more than I, I think. And uh, he invited me to, uh, to the Copenhagen University some years ago, where he was at a professorship, and I joined the seminar. And I think this, uh, we know each other maybe some time before that, yes. we met somewhere, I forgot where, but anyway. I think we, we met for the first time in uh, one of the Provage events. Yeah, maybe in Berlin. In Yes. That you met in the Berlin. Met in 2018. Yes? yes. Okay. Yeah, that's possible. Okay. So now he's a professor at the Umeå University. I spelled yes. it right. In the north of Sweden. Very north. And it's uh, uh, snowing right now. It's yes. cold. And beautiful. <laughs> I believe that. I spent some time in Sweden, uh, 21 at the end of 21, and uh, I remember that. Now we're in Belgrade at the Fans Con Congress. Yes. And uh, we had nice weather yesterday. It was sunny. Today it was raining. But Precisely. You have a swimming pool in the hotel, I learned. I could, <laughs> I could see how it was raining yeah. while I was swimming this morning. Next time, you choose another hotel. But anyway, we want to talk a little bit about uh, what's going on in the direction of plant-based diets, transition in the society. Mm. And uh, one thing which is uh, always of concern Why isn't it moving faster than maybe we want? So there are several reasons, barriers, and this is your area of research also. What, what can you tell, about, tell us about that? And that's true. It's my area of research. And um, I, I share this uh, concern that things are not happening as fast as they should. Um, the environmental crisis is too huge to be neglected and we know very well and that uh, transitioning from the current dietary lifestyles at population level to a more plant-based mm -hmm. diets or predominantly plant-based diets would be a very strong signal to the environment mm -hmm. and uh, it will definitely um, reduce all the pressure that the food system is putting in, into mm -hmm. the environment. Uh, there are, um, I, I would say, there are structural uh, limitations at the moment. The, the, re, the legislation, for example, the, um, the common agricultural uh, policy mm -hmm. um, generates a macroeconomic environment where uh, the production of um, foods uh, of animal origin are terribly cheap and the actual mm -hmm. prices are paid by the consumers and by society by society through healthcare services and consumers of course uh, through their taxes so the so that is that is a, at a macroeconomic level mm -hmm. um, also at the, at the level of um, population uh, the consumer and the main, mainstream citizen um, there are well known barriers in a recent study we uh, we investigated uh, which were the mm -hmm. main barriers to uh, adopting plant-based diets. And um, we responded also to, to the media, the social media. They, there, there's lots of talk or lots of uh, postings about how difficult it would be if uh, people would go and uh, really make a, a point about the barriers. Um, however, it seems that the, the barriers have been lowering down at the level of population. Okay. Um, they are mainly perceived by those who consider themselves as omnivores. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, they score high in the perception of the barriers. But at population level, uh, because of the surge of flexitarianism mm -hmm. and more vegetarians and more vegans in society, it seems that the, the, the big pressure of the barriers is, uh, is going down. So that, that opens uh, a kind of a, an opportunity mm -hmm. so that the initial adopters who, the, that would have been uh, vegetarians and vegans are being followed now for, by a um, larger uh, proportion of the population and it would be probably, probably more uh, late adopters that will mm -hmm. have to follow. So it is a, it is a process um, and I, I think 
what we can see is that at this moment um, the main barriers have to do have to do with um, lay beliefs mm -hmm. so people don't know about the nutritional sufficiency of plant-based diets people uh, think that uh, they are not going to be filled or they mm -hmm. are not going to uh, have sufficient nutrients mm -hmm. um, when it's not the case. So there is lots of misinformation, misinformation about their mm -hmm. relation, the gender relation with the, with plants as well. Mm -hmm. um, so there are, there are many beliefs that people won't have strength and so on, which have uh, no scientific basis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it's more a, a kind of... Uh, the belief, is, belief system. Let, let me uh, ask here a question. I mean, one thing which is percept, perceived as one of the main barriers is in the present situation, the inflation, higher prices, and sometimes plant-based diets so are supposed to be more expensive than, uh, which is not totally based by scientific data, but supposed or percepted, perceived as uh, more expensive than the usual diet. Where you uh, buy cheap meat. So, what, what can we do about that? Um, yeah, that's a very good uh, question. Uh, consumers, they they want at least in Western Europe, they want two things: tasty and cheap. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> that's the combination. How to get that there is a is a is a discussion with the food industry. Mm -hmm. But I think. Um, Man, how how do you explain if if people are saying? Yes, everything, it's, it's okay to do something for the environment and for health, but I cannot afford it because uh, inflation is taking yeah. all my money. So what, mm. what I wanted to, what I was thinking is, um, the perception is that, is when, when is on what people uh, classify in their minds mm -hmm. as plant-based diet. Mm -hmm. Because for some, plant-based diet means alternative, the specific alternatives to me that are, prepared and so on, but a, a, a plant-based diet that is cheap is uh, using locally produced legumes, for mm -hmm. example, or cereals, and a combination of many of those. So if, if you go to a, into a supermarket and, and buy mm, chickpeas, for example, or, or, mm -hmm. or yellow peas, and then you cook them and prepare mm -hmm. them and so on, they are going to give you your... Uh, nutrient requirements. Yeah. They're not expensive. And they are not expensive. Mm -hmm. So the uh, eating plants remains yeah. Yeah. being a very cheap alternative. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or it's uh, it's competitive in yeah. terms of price. Uh, it, it, it's the perception that people have mm -hmm. that uh, I need to buy these products that are a luxury kind of product mm -hmm. that will make my my diet plant-based yeah. and I, I think that it, that needs to be challenged so you're talking about also meat alternatives and dairy alternatives because if you compare them directly they are usually more at least in germany and i have the experience from sweden more expensive than the real meat or real sausage so uh, but that, that is uh, that is of course uh, the result of uh, the um, uh, the subsidies mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. I, I think in order to have fairness, uh, subsidies should be uh, removed from yeah. the picture. Mm -hmm. And then it shouldn't be the society that, uh, that covers the, the, mm -hmm. all the externalities, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, environmental and health. Yeah. And External external costs. Yes, from yes. the, from mm -hmm. the uh, production of this cheap meat mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and dairy. And also, as someone said in the, in the Congress, why do we want to give cheap things to our people. Yeah. And we know that cheap things are usually of, of lesser quality. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we, there is mounting evidence about the uh, concerns that mm -hmm. uh, foods of, uh, of animal origin are, are bringing. Yeah. Um, yesterday, I, I found that there was a, there's a paper in The Lancet where even they... they They, they associate ultra processed foods with uh, with health outcomes, mm -hmm. and it and plant based ultra processed foods are still not associated with uh, adverse health outcomes that mm -hmm. they report in in the Lancet. But mm -hmm. then, if it's the, the 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 meat and the sugary products and and the sugary sugar sweetened beverages, 
those are the ones that are associated mm -hmm. with the negative outcome. So it's a, uh, the, and those are the cheapest. Yeah. So I think we, <clears throat> yeah. we have to change our, our mind, change, change the discourses and, and the communication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And <clears throat> maybe one last question. I mean, there are, as we heard also in the conference, many differences between different countries, of course, low income countries and our richer Western countries, but also in Europe, there are many differences. We can experience it here. We're in yes. Belgrade. This is a totally different situation than in northern Sweden, uh, Sweden or maybe in Germany. So how can we manage this challenge? Um, is there one solution for all or do we have to tailor it a little bit more? Um, I, I don't think that... Uh, We are in the problem we are because the, we decided to have one solution for all mm -hmm. across Europe and so on. So mm -hmm. maybe we need to start thinking in um, in addressing more uh, country specific mm -hmm. needs. Um, we need to 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 use messages that uh, that relate to the to the culture and tradition of mm -hmm. the places. There is plenty mm -hmm. of plant based foods to be recovered and reused in uh, Central, Eastern, Northern yeah. Europe. Also here, in the yeah, Balkan in region. Every, everywhere. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it's not that, that we are missing plant-based mm -hmm. foods. Uh, yeah. we, we need to give them the right uh, presence, the, the right narrative as well. Mm -hmm. And in every country there are, there are good narratives that can mm -hmm. be associated mm -hmm. to that. And this is also one message of the, or one component of the planetary health diet. It has to be cultural adapted culturally relevant yeah, yes. yes and uh, of course your traditional foods are culturally relevant mm -hmm. and the belief that uh, meat and dairy are uh, uh, are traditional is quite interesting mm -hmm. uh, 100 years ago it wasn't uh, the tradition for for many in, many in countries, the mediterranean yeah. countries uh, mm -hmm. meat was eaten yeah. once a, once mm -hmm. a week or less mm -hmm. uh, and the same can be said about uh, scandinavia mm -hmm. so it has it has changed And the, the experience of the change to a, an animal-based diet has taken 100 years. Mm -hmm. So it seems that we will need to, to spend quite some time mm -hmm. trying to make this change. And unfortunately, we don't have the time. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, we, need, we need to remember that we are in a climate emergency and that action is required today and it cannot be delayed for 20 or mm -hmm. 30 or 40 years. We need to do the changes now. Mm -hmm. Are you confident <clears throat> that we can reach this goal in the near future? Um, I, despite all the um, hardships that humanity has been going in the, in the past uh, weeks, I think I, I mm -hmm. still believe that humans can do better. Mm -hmm. And I, I still believe that That there is a, that, that can be a critical mass mm -hmm. in humanity that will work for uh, for the well-being of, of of all and mm -hmm. not just few. Okay. So these are yeah, that's my end. Very good uh, take-home <laughs> messages. Thank you very much <clears throat> for having you. Uh, and um, yeah. <clears throat> Thank you for having me. We'll keep you informed. We keep in touch. And bye bye. Bye.